Hi there, this is Dan from OnlineBassCourses.com. I hope you're doing well. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make up a pop rock bass line using a recent remote session I did. So I'm going to show you the track and just pause it in interesting moments and show you what I was doing, just to give you some ideas of how you can approach writing your own bass lines. So here's the intro. So the name of the game here really was for me to keep it simple. It's pop rock and it calls for a nice supportive melodic bass line. You've got so many decisions to make as a bass player. And, and you know, obviously this is what I decided. You can think of something else. You might think it wants to go in a different direction and that's great. We, the studio rats, usually get together in studios, but due to the lockdown, we recorded this remotely. And I've done loads of 10 years of sessions remotely. So I'm quite experienced with this, but really, I think the idea is just to, to create a bass line that fits and that enhances the song. That's really where I want to go with this. So I wanted to keep things simple but melodic. Now we're about this speed. And the chords are really simple here. Just two bars of C going to two bars, bars of E minor. And the key that we're in here is E natural minor and its relative major of G major. So in terms of notes being played, that's really, really important. So any transition notes linking chords up are just literally from that scale. That's the first thing to know is just understand the key that you're in because to, to move melodically between chords, you'll be using notes from that scale. And the bass is an amazing instrument because it's just the link between rhythm, harmony, and melody. And my favorite bass lines anyway, use those three elements. But obviously your, your main thing I think is to, is to keep the groove without getting in the way of anything. And if you listen to James's drums, he does this really cool little kick drum pattern. And the kick drum is a really important element to listen to. So that. It's not something I would ordinarily play, but the, the track came to me fully formed and I heard that and I thought every now and again I'll catch that. There's no vocals in this intro, so for me there was a little bit more scope to stretch out a tiny bit more, but again, keeping it pretty simple for this track. Often when I'm thinking of chords, you can think in terms of that Roman numeral system that works really well. So the C is the four chord in G major and the E minor is the six chord. So, you know, I can think of it that way, four to six. And there's my G there on the third fret of the, of the E string. So harmony wise, I'm really only playing root notes. So there's not much else to talk about there. The verse is exactly the same chord progression, but there are a couple of things that Chris, the vocalist does, which is really beautiful that I heard and I thought I might react to that. When he sings under my skin there, I'm not playing exactly the same melody, but I'm playing the same rhythm. And I was telling you about the kick drum. So always latch on to the kick drum, not always. I mean, to say always is wrong because often you'll hear bass lines that do stick to the kick drum and it's just right. But then you'll hear other ways of interplaying with that. But the kick drum is a really important element to listen to. But don't forget vocals there. I just heard that vocal line and it just sparked that in me. So I just played hammer on from five to seven on the E string and then frets five on the A and then the D before landing on that E. So nice long notes with little transitions that are melodic. We're using again the notes of that E natural minor and the, the pentatonic scale just sounds so, always to me sounds right, especially with hammer ons. You can make it sound quite soulful. So moving on to the pre-chorus. Right right 
fairly simple decision there following james's kick drum again there a lot of pop music is about energy we're about to get to the chorus and, and choruses tend to want to be high energy so we're just ramping things up a bit here <laughs> Couldn't be simpler there, wasn't doing any fills, nothing, nothing else there. Just keep that simple. Okay, another ramp up in energy there, and just using 16th notes. Now that chord there is a G with a B in the bass, and that's important that you know the harmony there. So the guitar's playing a G, but the bass is playing the, the third of that, and that's an inversion. And Paul, who is the songwriter, loves all that kind of thing. So I often stick to to what I know he likes. And that's when you're working with different producers, that's a good thing to do. So. You know, you can play the B and then drop down to the G, but I was more or less sticking to that. And again, keeping this fairly simple, just sticking to the 16th notes. But again, if you want to make things melodic, all I'm doing there is linking up the different chords using, again, the notes from the natural minor scale. Whether you think natural minor or, or G major, they're both related, is, is up to you, really. But the notes are there for you to choose from. Second verse, James ramps things up a little bit more. And I liked bass lines and songs to build a little bit. So in this one, I was just doing, again, same chord progression, but just a little bit more. It's not exactly what I was playing, but just keeping those long notes, but maybe a little bit more rhythmic interest now and using those same notes to link the chords up. So we've got the same pre-chorus, chorus leading into the middle eight. I didn't do too much different there. It's pretty much the same. Then the middle eight, the energy dies down a bit, and I just kept the bass more or less the same. And it sounds like there's a bit more going on because there's less elsewhere, but just C, A minor, E. A little bit more opportunity to get some melodic stuff in there. And it's really important to, to make the point that I've listened to who I've listened to, and I've got the gear and the tone that I have, and these are all my decisions. You may be thinking of something else, and that's totally all right. Sometimes you have to get it past the producer. I remember I did a couple of takes for this, and I did a bit more melodic fills and things going on here, and it was a bit too much, so I chose the simpler version. So you can't always get exactly what you want onto a track. It's, it's You've got to think first and foremost, how does this enhance the song? How does this make everything else fit in and feel more comfortable because you as the link between the rhythm, harmony and melody have a really important role. But yeah, just a few more melodic things, again, using exactly the same scales that I was talking about before. For example, there we got the C. Just did a little slide up to the, to the A on the seventh fret of the D string. Very pentatonic, just sounds pretty simple, but melodic. That was a little slide from fret seven to nine, back again on the D string, and then fret five down to that E. That's something you can do is just take this chord progression. Don't bother putting a metronome or any chords or anything else with it. Just practice playing nice long notes. That's a fifth. 
fifth is just when you go two frets across from a note and the next string down, or you put that down the octave. And you've got octaves as well. All these key notes that you hear that are within chords, really, really simple. Apply some rhythm to that, lock into a groove and you have a bass line. Interact with the different chords by playing through the notes of the scales and you have a melodic bass line. And listen to as many bass lines as you can and, you, and you'll analyze them in that way. You'll hear the same notes going on a lot of the time. But it's weird, it never sounds the same. It's it's incredible really. The, the, the millions of different bass lines you can get that use pretty much the same things. Double chorus, so it was the same 16th note feel going on here, and I think I just did a couple more fills. Pretty much the similar fill that I was doing in the middle eight there. Now, one rule of fills is to not play over other instruments. So often if you hit, if you hear if you're doing a remote session you hear that a drummer's doing a fill, don't do a fill there. Or over a guitar or over a, certainly not over the vocal line. The other rule is to make sure and this works live as well. This is something that if you go for a fill and and just miss the the next beat one of the chord of the bar. That's really really an important thing not to do. Most people just want bass players to play something simple and to hit that beat one all the time. So if you're doing a film, make sure you hit it there. So But you can make things a little bit more melodic. In this last section here, we've got a double chorus and, and we're leading into a guitar solo. The energy goes up a bit. So that's why I was just adding a little bit more a little bit more here but do you see there's a, there is an arc here we start simply i mean throughout the whole song but also throughout the bass line much of pop rock music is about elements within the arrangement whether that's the bass line creating hooks the guitar line creating hooks the whole thing together has to work so really for me it's not a hard and fast blueprint but for this song you know start quite slow build the parts a little bit and by the end be at, at the peak and that worked for this song but every song is going to be slightly different and really if you want to do you know remote sessions or or you play in different bands or even become a pro I really think it's a good idea to listen to as many different styles as you can listen to the greats because they are the ones that are going to teach you the correct way I mean correct is the wrong word because they're everyone if you lined up a hundred different bass players they might have a hundred different ways of interpreting any song and that's the beauty of music i hope that gave you a few ideas of how you might approach any song in any style really you know what are the elements there we're listening to the kick drum we're listening to the melodic aspects we're keeping it simple and that i think is really the role of the bass if you want to play really great bass lines if you want to work loads just play simple bass lines that that fit and don't get in the way too much. People like that. I hope you got something from that. Please do subscribe to this channel. I do videos every week, at least one. And if you have any ideas for future lessons, do leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.